Hello you guys, welcome back. I'm Melissa, thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna be bringing you my March favorites for this video and I'm really excited to show you guys the plants that I have been loving lately. I'm actually gonna be starting with one of the plants behind me. I'm gonna go ahead and jump straight into this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get started. It's going to be really hard to show you my first plant, but I wanna get started with this one. This is my Epipremnum Marble Queen. And I think out of all the plants right now, this one is by far my favorite. I just can't describe to you these big leaves. This is the newest one, it's still hardening. So it's still getting bigger. Look at that. Isn't she gorgeous? Look at those leaves. I do have a video on my channel where I show how I am doing the process of getting her off of plastic onto a wire pole. I have chopped this plant once. So the bottom half is still plastic and the top half is all wire. So, the last node is here. So I imagine I could probably do maybe four more leaves, maybe, and then I will be chopping this plant again. It's going to really hurt me to chop this plant, uh, but I have to do it. I have to get her off of plastic and I wanna continue getting large leaves. I would love a fenestrated leaf in my indoor environment. Could you imagine? I'm obsessed, like this leaf, you guys, like this is my head, <laughs> this is my hand. This one, when I measured it, it ended up being almost 11 inches. So this one is probably going to expand to a foot at least, I imagine. It is a huge leaf. It's crazy to think that this is a marble queen. This is a plant that you can go get probably just down the street at your local nursery. <laughs> and it looks like a variegated monstera in a way you know, with these beautiful leaves. I do have two other vines down here on the bottom. This one has been such a joy to watch climb. I can't tell you how excited I get when a new leaf comes out. She's pushing a new leaf fairly quickly. There's already another one getting started back here and I'm obsessed with her. Definitely my favorite plant out of all of them for this month and overall, like seriously, one of my favorites. It's always a toss between this one and my Monsteras because I'm such a Monstera girl at heart. I love them, but this one, you guys, I could not leave this plant. Out of all the plants in my collection, if this one disappeared, I would be really sad. Some of my other ones too, but this one would, would hurt. <laughs> I just I just adore this plant so much. So I highly recommend growing one up on a moss pole. They climb so fast. This one has been on a pole a little over a year now. I started her January of 2022. Climb so fast is so rewarding, so worth it. And my moss is completely dry. I have to water my poles today. So my poles dry out all the time and they still climb and do just fine. So yes, very, very happy with this one. And I love this one. The next plant I have been obsessing over this month is my Monstera Oblica. Some of you guys remember this plant from when I imported it last summer from Indonesia. It had a four original leaves, which are these ones down here. It had one more, but it was kind of going out. It was yellowing. So I'm like, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of it so that that yellow leaf doesn't bug me. So these are the original leaves and this is the newest one, you guys. It is huge. So like it's, almost my whole arm span. It's crazy, it's such a big leaf and it already is working on a new one. I have it on one of Thickly's larger grow poles and I'm gonna have to be extending it very soon. You can see all of the roots in there. So it is loving this pole, it is loving climbing so many roots coming out of the bottom of the pot here too. Out of all the imports, I feel like this one has by far just grown the absolute best and has done so well. I just can't get over these big leaves. You guys can see my, I don't know if you guys can see my Adansonii behind me. And this one just doesn't compare in leaf size, like it's huge. 
It's done so well in my care and I can't wait to get it to be like six feet in height. I couldn't imagine even bigger leaves than this. Like this is a huge leaf. So I can't imagine that. If you can get your hands on a Escaletto, I would definitely recommend. I feel like this one is easier than the Adansonii. My Adansonii has always been a finicky plant. It stresses very easily. This one was imported and endured a lot, but I find that it didn't really like go downhill at all and has done so well. It's not really finicky, it's growing pretty fast. So if you've been trying to decide which one to get, I would definitely go with this one, especially if you're wanting like huge leaves. This one is a must have. Definitely one of my favorite plants in my collection. So happy that I have it. And yeah, I'm gonna be extending it very soon. So I'm excited to see the growth that I'm gonna get this summer on this plant. I'm so excited. Next plant that I am loving for this month is my Stromanthi Trio Star. Oh, there goes a bunch of soil. I recently repotted this one in a plant chores video. It's been about a month, I would say. So she is in an eight inch pot now. I went up to a eight inch. I think she was in a six inch before or a five inch. One of the three that I repotted that day, one of them was in a five inch and the other two was in a six inch. I think this one was actually in a five inch. I remember a white pot, I think. So I did go up a few inches and she has so much new growth in here that she is exploding with. The underside on this plant is beautiful. It's like a hot pink color. So, so pretty. I know these can get <laughs> sort of a bad rap with getting crispy leaves and stuff, but I still get crispy leaves on mine. It happens. I'm actually gonna pluck one off because I don't like it. It's like crispy and yellowing. But I just prune mine back to make it look nice and leaves that are super crispy, I'll just, you know, prune back and get rid of. It's filled out on its own. This plant started, I think, with five leaves. It's been in my care probably close to a year and a half, maybe longer, I'd have to look back, maybe even closer to two years. So it's taken a while to fill out and get to this point. Again, if you're getting the crispiness, I would recommend watering not with tap water. I, if you can get rainwater or even like spring water is better than just tap water because sometimes some of these plants can be a little sensitive to those harsh minerals. So if you're having problems with that, I would recommend switching your water. And then also if you can increase humidity, that will help. But sometimes my humidity in here is low, so it happens, I still get crispy leaves. Even in a greenhouse with ideal conditions, you're still gonna get crispy leaves. So don't expect perfection because your plants are never gonna be perfect. You can kind of, you know, aesthetically make them how you want them to appear and prune what you don't like, cut off yellowing leaves, brown edges, stuff like that. But you can't expect to never to get crispy leaves because it's gonna happen no matter what. But yes, I definitely love this one and recommend this one. I keep changing the view up for this video. I hope you guys don't mind. This next one is a newer plant in my collection. I've had it probably less than a month now. It is a purple exalis. Look at all those blooms. Look how pretty and happy it looks. I seriously love this plant. I will say the blooms are kind of annoying because when they dry up and they fall, they make a mess. That's the only thing. I actually don't keep this one in my plant room. I keep it um, in my east window in the dining area so it gets a lot of morning sun, which it seems to love. I just think the triangle shape is so beautiful. So pretty. It's in the original soil and pot. I haven't done anything with it. I've watered it probably a couple times now since I've had it. And yeah, I was debating on whether or not to put it in here or outside because I know they love like bright light and they would love the shade outside, but it seems so happy in my east window that I don't want to move it. I might get one for next year and plant it outside in the shade on like that side of the house, I think would be beautiful out there. So I think I will get more and plant them next year. Unless I happen to see more when I'm shopping, I might be tempted to get a couple more and plant them. Go ahead and like plant them. 
because it's still pretty early, so I think I could probably get away with planting some, but we'll see. But it's definitely been one of my favorites this month. I just, I love the color, the blooms, and everything. Besides the mess factor, I'm like pulling off all the dead leaves. But yes, I love this one. It's been so easy so far, and I'm excited. I'm excited to have this one in my collection. Many of you guys know that I have been dealing with flat mites on my Maranta slash Calathea collection, and it's been so sad and disappointing. Uh, I am going to make another video. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but I will be updating that and kind of sharing more of my findings and how the plants that are affected are currently doing and stuff like that. So I will be making that. But this one has been an absolute gem. This is my red Maranta. It also had flat mites, not as bad. I think I caught this one pretty early and got it treated. I did treat it a couple of times. I haven't done like the full round of treatment. I went ahead and put it back in my plant room just because it was starting to yellow leaves and get sad that it was out of here and I didn't want to stress it out. So I kind of have it isolated down on the floor. It's not touching any other plants. So we'll see. So far it seems to be happy. I don't really notice flat mite damage. I still have like salt, dried sulfur on some of the leaves. I need to spend some time wiping this plant off and just making it look nicer again. But again, I just, I love these plants. I adore these plants. They seem to do well for me. They're not like, they're easier than Calathea's, but again, they're not like, I feel like you just have to have like a good care environment for these because they can stress easily. They just love consistency with, I feel like temperature, humidity and all of that. And you know, you're gonna get crispiness with these two because I get crispy leaves. It may not look like it, but again, like I'll pluck leaves off like I just did that has like a crispy bit to it just to manicure it and make it look nice because I like my plants to look nice. If you're getting a lot of crispiness, increase humidity and change your water and it should help. My Amarantas will sometimes, and my Calatheas sometimes will go all the, right, all the way dry. It honestly, it just depends how warm it is in here. Like right now it's currently 76%. And it's a little bit more humid today, it's 61, which the more humid it is in here, the, the less my soil will dry out. But if the temperature gets over 80, then things dry out pretty quickly in here. So sometimes I'll have to water these twice a week. It just depends, but sometimes they will go all the way dry, but I try not to let these go all the way dry. I would say at least like halfway. If I, usually I can go by the heaviness of the pot. Like right now I can tell this plant is pretty heavy so it's not thirsty. And then I usually do the finger test in the soil. If I feel moisture, like the first inch or two down, then I don't water because I know it's not time yet. I don't let my plants go so thirsty that they're stressing like underwater. I don't let them get to that point. Sometimes it does happen, but for the most part, I try to water on schedule and they love that because they don't get overwatered and they don't get underwatered. So it's hard to stay consistent all the time, but I really try my best and at least water these guys once a week. I'm happy that she is beating flat mites and seems happier and isn't like super stressed out. So hopefully she keeps growing and does well for me. Next up is my Acacia Friday. She's big, you guys, she is a big plant. I have to give her love because she's been my favorite this month. Well, one of my favorites this month. I love her so much and she just won't stop growing. I have another new leaf coming in. And I don't know what this is. I think I might have a bloom. No, I think I might have a bloom coming in. I'm not sure. Or another, I've never like seen this. So normally she produces a new leaf from the lead leaf. Like you can see here is the new leaf, but she also has this here, which I think is another leaf coming in which is interesting that she's sprouting another leaf in there. Does that make sense? So that's the new leaf from the lead leaf. And then there's another growth point in here. So that's interesting. I don't know what's going on with that. I actually just noticed that earlier today because I was taking a picture with her 
and I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. So I don't know what she's doing. She does have a couple leaves that were getting a little sad, like um, some yellowing and just some discoloration. I think she may have gotten some spider mites, which my alocasias don't normally get spider mites, but I had like an outbreak with some phyllos in my collection and some got on my regal shields and then she was next to my regal shields. So some may have gotten on her. Oh yeah, I think I see a couple spider mites. Okay, I'm gonna re-spray her. So that's why she has a couple sad leaves. I did just recently make an alocasia care video, so I don't really wanna go into too much details about my care with her, but I will link that up. Um, I think it's on this side up here for you or up there for you, if you wanna know more about how I care for my alocasias. But yes, I love her, she's beautiful and I'm mad that she has some spider mites. Yeah, I had a spider mite outbreak in my cabinet recently. My philodendron mame or mamei caught some recently and my whole entire cabinet was crawling in spider mites because the fans and they were blowing them around. I have it quarantined out of my cabinet and hopefully they won't come back, so. Yeah, I'm gonna give this fry deck after this video a spray with Azamax. It's what I use to treat spider mites. I just take a hose and spray off the leaves with the water stream, and then I will um, treat with Azamax. And that usually takes care of them. Sometimes I have to retreat depending on how thorough I am initially, because some can still stay alive. So it really just depends. But usually, if you Treat once and then wait a week and treat again. That should definitely take care of the problem. So I've only sprayed her once um, back when I had spider mites. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray her again um, just to get rid of the few remaining on there. But I love alocasias. They do so well for me, which I'm very fortunate of. And I think they're beautiful plants and I do eventually want more in my collection, you know, eventually I think, but we'll see. <laughs> but yes, I love my Friday. Another moss pole that I want to show you guys that I've been obsessed with is my Philodendron Glorious. I know I talked about this one, but I just, I don't know. I feel like I love the leaves on this one just as much as a Splendid. It's hard to pick a favorite between those two, but this one, I feel like the leaves are just more velvety and just so beautiful. <laughs> this is the newest one, and I actually have a couple new ones here in the middle. I have one here, and I also have one here, because I have several vines growing up on here. I am gonna be extending this one soon, because it's reached the top, so I'll probably add an extension on, probably like as soon as possible before a new leaf like starts to grow and come out. This one's a hybrid, so it's easier. It's a, um, Milano Chrysum and Gloriosum. I had to think for a minute. So it's definitely a lot easier to care for. It is a very thirsty plant on a pole. I, I'm trying to do my best to not let it get super dry, but it still gets dry sometimes. But I just think it's such a beautiful plant and I love the velvety goodness. If you don't have a Glorious, I definitely recommend I just think it's just so beautiful. And although I love my Gloriosum, it has like a different heart shape to the leaf. There's just something about the look of this one, I guess. I don't know. I just love it so much. I think my last favorite that I'm gonna show you guys is my Mekoyana, because I feel like this one has been just really appreciating that repot. This was the other one that I did with my Stromanthi. And it's special to me because I grew it back from nothing. And I feel like this one, as far as, far as Calatheas go, this one isn't as finicky. So if you're looking to get one, I would definitely recommend this one and the Rattlesnake Calathea because I have that one as well. I feel like the Rosa Pictia Sylvia isn't a picky, Calathea either. And this one's getting ready to bloom. It's already bloomed once for me. I don't know if you're gonna be able to make it out. There's, let's see. I don't know if you can see that little flower bud by my pinky happening there. But I've gotten lots of new growth since the repot. It's definitely appreciated it. I have so many shoots like popping up out of here and the new leaves are beautiful. Look at that new leaf. 
The back side is just as pretty with that undertone, the red to it. This is definitely a happy Calathea. I love this one and I'm excited to see it grow more this summer and how big it's gonna get from the repot. I hope it like doubles its size. That would be amazing. This one didn't catch flat mites either, which I'm very appreciative of. I would have been so sad. And it was actually um, near a plant that had flat mites, which is so interesting the way that they have spread, I guess, to certain plants. Definitely like Marianta Calathea for some reason. But I love my Makoyana and I can't wait to see her grow more. Thank you guys so much for watching my favorites for this month. I have more, but I'm waiting for them to either grow a little bit more or to like finish like hardening off a leaf because there's one that I've been attracted to this month. One of my Monstera Deliciosas, but it's growing a new leaf and I want to wait to it to fully unfurl because I know I'm going to be obsessed with it. It's outside and I've been loving my Monstera Dubia as well because it's growing so fast. So those are some other favorites. But I love so many plants, you guys. Ugh, it's so hard to pick favorites for the month, but these ones I feel like have been just a little bit more special this month or just have spoken to me a little bit more. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you guys later.